Hi everyone and welcome to this tutorial. In this tutorial, we'll set up our development environment to use Struts2. So the things that we need to do are to go to the Struts2 website and download the distribution and then set up our project so that we can have the distribution included in the build path. So the first thing that I'm going to do is go to the Struts website. Uh, I have the website open over here. You can just search online for Struts2 and you'll be pointed to the uh, Apache Struts website. So here you have a download link. Click on this and choose the Struts 2 version. You can choose the full distribution. Just click on it. It's a zip file. You can download and extract the zip file. Okay, so here I have extracted the Struts 2 zip file and these are the files and folders that I have. Um, the lib folder, as we know, has all the libraries and uh, the source folder contains the source of struts2 which is very handy if you want to explore the code or do some debugging and uh, there's also a docs folder which contains a good set of documentation for developing a struts2 web application you would need the contents of this lib folder so these are the jars that we'll have to include in our eclipse project so let's go ahead and create one i have eclipse open over here so i'll create a new project. So I'll choose other and uh, for this example I'll be choosing a web project because Struts2 is a web framework and we need a web application that uses the Struts2 framework. So I'll choose the dynamic web project. Click next. Okay now I can give a name to my project. I'll call this Struts2 starter. I have a target runtime option over here where um, I've chosen Apache Tomcat. This is a runtime that you have to install in your Eclipse environment. If you're not familiar with how to do that, you can refer to my serverless tutorial, which talks about how we can download a, tar you know, a target runtime. In this case, it happens to be Tomcat. And then you can set up the runtime using the new runtime option over here. You can choose the Tomcat option and point to the directory where you've downloaded the Tomcat and then you should be good to go. So this is the target runtime that you know shows up as a result. So I've selected Apache Tomcat 7, which is the only one that I have on my machine over here. And uh, the rest are fine as the defaults. Click next, next. Okay, now here it talks about the web module configuration. What is the context route that you want and what is the content directory that you want. Again, if you go through my service tutorial, you should have a good idea about what these are. So I will choose web as the content directory. Context root struts to starter is fine. I'll choose the option to generate the web.xml and I'll click finish. Now Eclipse is going to generate this web application for me with all these options. And since we have you know, configured a runtime, which is Tomcat, I can, once I have uh, done the coding, I can right click on the project and say run, and then it's automatically gonna take care of deploying it in Tomcat and then starting the application. Okay, so here is my new web application, Struts2 Starter. Let's open it up and see what it contains. So it has a web directory and a SRC directory. The web directory contains all the web content and it has one important directory called webinf, which contains the web.xml as well as the libraries. And the source directory will be where we keep our Java classes. Now, the library folder is empty right now, but we need to add the struts to jars over here so that they are accessible to our code, which uses the struts framework. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna create our own user library, which uses some of the common struts to jars that we would need. And then we'll make sure that user library is getting added to this lib folder. So what I'll do is right click on the project, go to properties, and here I go to the Java build path. Now in the Java build path, I click on libraries and choose add library. Now here, there is an option to add user library. I click next. Of course, there are no user libraries right now because I have not configured a user library for struts too. So I'm gonna do that now. So this is the panel where I manage all my user libraries. I'll create a new one. I'll call it struts2. 
click on OK. Now I can add all the jars that I need to this user library. So I'll click on Add Jars and I navigate to the directory where we just downloaded and extracted the starts to zip file and to the lib folder inside. So these are all the jars that are required for starts to. Uh, I could do a select all and add all of them, but not all of them are required at this point of time. So let's just choose the ones that are essential to what we're trying to do now. So the first jar that I'm going to add is the starts to core. So this is the one. So this is the core jar that's required for the starts to functionality. So this is the one that I'm going to add first. Then I will add xwork and OGNL. We'll talk about what those are in the subsequent tutorials, but just uh, add them. Xwork is over here and OGNL is over here. Make sure you're pressing control while you click this. Um, next, I'm going to add the comments. So go to the comments. So here you have a few comments jars. So I'm going to add file upload, commons IO, logging, logging API, and this should do it. And then finally, I'm going to add two other jars, which is free marker and Java assist, which is over here. I'm going to open. Now there is one more commons jar that I need to add over here which is the commons lang. I had missed this out, so let me add that as well. So these are the jars that are required. I'll minimize all these and um, expand this so that you can probably pause the video and uh, verify if you have all these jars. So this is it. Now I'll press OK. Now you have a user library for starts to. So I click finish over here. So this is now added to my class path. Now I click OK. Now this will have the library here. Now if you go to Project Explorer, so here you can see the Java resources libraries has the starts to. But here's an additional step that you'll have to do because this is a web application. Not only do we need to have this library in the class path, we would also need to tell Eclipse to bundle this into our web INF lib because in the deployed application in Tomcat, this library has to go sit over here. So this lib folder needs to contain all the jars that we've added in the starts to library. So how do we tell Eclipse to take that library and add it to this lib folder when it's deploying the application? So how we do that is, again, right click on the project and go to this option here called deployment assembly. So this gives instructions to Eclipse about how it needs to assemble all the different files when it is actually deploying it. So I will add a new rule over here. So I will say Java build path entries, which is starts to, needs to go to web INF lib. So now what's gonna happen is Eclipse, when it deploys the starts application after it compiles it, it takes this and puts it into the web INF lib folder so that it's ready for Tomcat to use. So I'll click apply and hit OK. So now we are all set with a web application, a blank web application that uses the struts2 libraries. And we can now start writing code that uses the struts2 framework, which we'll do in the next tutorial. Thanks for watching.